Let's do the next topic, basis. We will first define what a basis is. So, if we are given a vector space V and S a subset of V, then S will be a basis for the vector space if and only if it satisfies two conditions. One is that S spans V and the other is that S is linearly independent subset of V. Every vector space will have a standard basis. For example, if we take R2, it has a standard basis 1, 0, 0, 1. There are two vectors in this. We also write it as Ij. We can test that these two vectors are linearly independent also and they span R2. If we take R3, there are three vectors which form the standard basis 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1. Or we can write it as i, j, k. The standard basis for Rn is e1, e2, e3, en. These are all unit vectors and this subset forms the standard basis for Rn. Then how about the vector space of matrices of order 2 by 2? That has a st standard basis 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. The vector space of all polynomials of degree less than equal to n has a standard basis which will have the vectors 1, x, x square, and x up to x to the power n. All these vectors, they satisfy both the conditions. The number of elements in a basis of any vector space is called the dimension and we write it as DIMV. So does that mean that there are only standard bases of a vector space? No. There can be many other bases or we can say that a subset S with different types of vectors can also form a basis. But one thing which we have to notice, whatever basis we have, the number of elements in the basis will always be the same. So if we take the vector space R2 and you take different bases of R2, still the dimension of R2 will remain 2. Dimension of R3 will be 3, dimension of Rn will be n, and dimension of the vector space m, m cross n will be m into n. If we want to find the dimension of Pn, we can see in the standard basis, we have n plus 1 vectors. If we want to find out if we want to find if a given subset S forms a basis for a vector space or not, first we write the vectors in columns and form, let's say, a matrix A. We will first reduce the matrix A to the row echelon form and then we'll check the rank of the matrix. If the rank of the matrix A is equal to the dimension of the vector space under consideration, then the subset forms a basis, otherwise it does not. So we can see that it is not necessary to check both the conditions which were given in the definition that the subset spans the vector space and the subset is linearly independent. We need not do that. By just one condition, that rank of A is equal to dimension of V, it, is, it suffices to show that the subset forms a basis. What if the rank of A is less than the dimension of V? Then we will first check which are the columns which have the pivot. The vectors corresponding to them in the original subset, they form a basis. But note, they form a basis for the span of S, not for the vector space. We will now do some examples. 
what if we want to check that the subset S of R3 given here with vectors 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1 forms a basis or not? We'll first put them in columns and form a matrix A. We will bring it to the REF form by doing the elementary row transformations. We can see the final matrix has pivot in each column. Pivot here is 1. So, we also deduce that the rank of the matrix is 3 and that's the dimension of our vector space R3. S then forms a basis for R3. What if we take a subset of R4? We have four, uh, three vectors here and we want to check whether they form a basis for R4 or not. Now, we will first form the matrix A by putting these vectors into columns. And we will do the row echelon form, REF form, and reduce it to the matrix 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 2, 0, 0, 0. In this final matrix, we see that the rank of this matrix A is 3 as there are 3 non-zero rows. And the dimension of R4 is 4, so S does not form a basis for R4. Now, the vector of S although forms a basis for span of S. The three vectors which have the pivot, they will be the basis for span of S. In this example 3, let's say we are given a subset S of the vector space P3 of polynomials less than or equal to degree 3. To form the matrix A, we will write the coefficients of powers of x. In the first polynomial, we can see the coefficient of x cube is 1, coefficient of x square is minus 2, coefficient of x is 0, as there is no x, and the constant term is 1. So we formed a column of 1 minus 2, 0, 1. In the same way, we write the coefficients of all other 5 polynomials. When we do the row elementary transformations and bring it to the row echelon form, the final matrix which we get is given here. We see that first column has a pivot, second one has, third has a pivot, fourth column does not have a pivot and the fifth column has a pivot. So, this subset S does not form a basis for the vector space P3, but it does form a basis for the span of S. So now what will be in the basis? The basis B will then have those polynomials which corresponded to the columns with pivot. So the first column had a pivot, so we took the first polynomial. Second column had a pivot, so we took the second polynomial. Third column had a pivot, so we took the third polynomial. And fifth column had a pivot, so we took the fifth polynomial. And these polynomials will now form a basis for the span of S, not for P3. So, this is how we form the basis. Thank you.